Suppose that I have a, this one, the throttle position sensor. This is the throttle position sensor. The sensor that moves the flap in gasoline, carburetors, and throttle bodies. You remember that? Okay. I can check this sensor in two different ways. I can check this sensor with the engine off, and I can check this sensor with the engine running. With the engine off, in between some specific terminals, remember that this one has three terminals, positive, negative, and signal. Ah, okay, in between the negative and signal, with the engine off, I am going to check resistance arms with the flap, with the flap closed. And now I move the, the, the gas pedal, and now with the flap open, I check the resistance. Okay, the resistance changed from uh, 200 ohms into 1.3 kilo ohms. What is the meaning of that? The res when I move the flap on the carburetor, the resistance here in between signal and ground changed from 200 ohms until uh, 1200 ohms. This is an indication that the sensor is? Working. Is? Working. It's working. It's working. Doesn't matter if it's in between 300 and 1800 is working. The sensor is damaged when I move the flap and the resistance continues 200 or zero because it's open. You understand, my friends? You, you need the manual? No, you only need to verify if the sensor is working. This is with the engine off. Ah, with the engine running and the plug connected here, the harness, I use a couple of needles. And I punch ground and signal, and I connect my multimeter in volts DC. And now I accelerate with the engine running, and I check the voltage in idle, 0 0.7 volts. And I accelerate 1.2, 1.3, 1.7, 4.3, 4.7. 0 0.7, 4.7. It's good? It's good. It's perfect. You can check voltage reference with the engine running. And you can check ohms with the engine off in the majority of the sensors. Difficult? No. The only that you need to verify is which terminal is the signal, which one is the ground, and which one is the power. Good? Important. Other important thing, pay attention. The people say, Mr. Lopez, I have a problem in my engine. Uh, and uh, the code that I have in the computer is O2, O2 sensor, oxygen sensor. And uh, I don't know what happened. I, re I replaced that sensor, the oxygen sensor, three times. And uh, the code disappeared for two weeks and start again. The, the, the light will be again. Uh, I replaced the sensor three times, my friends, because 99% of the time, the problem is not on the sensor. The sensor is, is, is the alarm. The sensor indicates that you have a problem. What sends the, the oxygen sensor? Exhaust. The quality of the exhaust gases. The amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases. If the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases is not according with the parameters of uh, the computer of this engine, what happened? Sensor. This sensor indicates to the computer that you have a problem, and the computer, the computer turned on the light. The problem is on the sensor? No. no, the problem is in the gases. The amount of oxygen in your gases is not enough for this computer, for this system. Why? Give me possibilities for that problem in the exhaust gases. I have less amount of oxygen than the recommended. Give me one possibility. We use to sound like carbon deposits. The Probably the mixture is too rich. Probably the, uh, the temperature. Or probably um, a bad fuel. The fuel is contaminated with sulfur or phosphorus. It's a fuel from Bahamas. Yeah? Which one is the one that really goes like Honduras or something? Yeah, it's, it's another problem that I need to solve it. Or I have a mechanical problem in the engine, and for that reason, the gases, the amount of oxygen is not 
is not the oxygen recommended. Good, my friends. Okay, for that reason today we are going to, to check each student have a, one code, one sensor, and uh, we are going to start uh, with you, mommy, with the OBD2 sensors. We are going to check the difference between OBD2, OBD1, and DTC. And what is the meaning of that? OBD1 was the beginning uh, when, the, when the engines changed from carburetors into TDI. You remember? The carburetors, the throttle body with only one injector in the center of the carburetor. When the, when the, when the engine passed from carburetors to, to uh, TBI, uh, was introduced the OBD1. And uh, start with, with some codes. And uh, when you have a code in that, in that, uh, in that type of engines, uh, you, you, you have uh, the, the, the check engine light intermittent. And uh, you need to verify uh, how is uh, how is uh, the the intervals and 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 uh, and, uh, and the time of the intervals. And according with this, you open the switch and you see one, two, three, stop, one, two. Ah, the code is twelve. And you go and this is twelve and you solve it. And after that, you turn on the switch one, two, three times and the gas and the brake pedal one two, three, and you clean the code. It's, it's, it's something like this. That was before 1992, OBD1. After 1992, start OBD2, and this is OBD2. No. Let me explain something. You remember the gasoline engine that uh, you have in the majority of your boats in board, the Merc Cruiser, the Merc Cruiser uh, six uh, cylinders or A cylinder, you remember, the VA? That Merc Cruiser engine, the VA, is the same is the same General Motors 305, the, the, the famous 305 or 350, big block. You remember for the for the, the engine that you have in your uh, Chevy trucks, Silverado, and uh, the engine that uh, your grand uh, your grandfather have in the in the Chevrolet Bel Air and the Chevrolet Impala, uh, the 305. It's the same engine. It's the same engine that you have today, Dembran, that you have today in the in the Merc Cruisers. The same engine is the same engine. It's the same engine. The only that uh, they change is the manifold because it's Marwin. And uh, the new one, the new Merc Cruiser, have a lot of uh, sensors and harness and computer. And the diagnosis is complicated. I remember 20 years ago when, when, when you have a, a typical uh, Chevy 350 and uh, you have a problems, you have only the carburetor, the ignition coil, and the battery, and that's it. And it's too simple, uh, the diagnosis. And the new engine is, is exactly the same engine, but uh, with all of those sensors and harness and computer, the diagnosis is practically impossible. Uh, and uh, I, you check the advertisement of uh, the Chevy uh, uh, pickup truck uh, in uh, 1955, 1960, and uh, the consumption of fuel is exactly the same like uh, of uh, this engine 65, 70 years later. The consumption of fuel is exactly the same. And the, and the pollution is exactly the same, the emissions. What is the advance? I, I don't know if you are familiarized, uh, Alvarez, with the, with, the, with the situation that uh, you have a code in your car and uh, you visit uh, any shop in your neighbor and the guy have a generic scanner and the guy say okay let me connect oh yeah yeah it's a it's a it's a code related with the fuel okay but uh, uh it's simple you replace the fuel filter yes i replace the fuel filter you replace the, yeah okay let me clean the code and he cleaned the code with the generic scanner and three weeks later you have the code again and you visit again the shop and the guys clean again other three weeks Finally, you say, no, I visit that shop and they clean the code for three weeks, but the code is a state over there. I have a problem. You need to visit the dealer. And in the dealer, when they connect the, the, the scanner, of course, they, they identify that it's a problem with the fuel, but uh, they have more details with that scanner. They say it's in the cylinder number two 
is a short to ground in the injector number two. Ah. Ah, they go to the injector number two, verify, it's broken, and they repair, ta 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 ta, and they solve it. In other words, the computers of the dealers are computers with more information, and they go deeply, and they go under the ground, and they discover the basic, the fundamentals of the problem. Those generic computers that you buy in internet or in a, any uh, 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 auto parts clean the code superficial, but the problem in the bottom is not solved. Uh, in Marwin, the protocol is not universal. In Marwin, in Marwin, uh, Yamaha, the DTC code tier team is different like the DTC code tier team in Mercury. And in Volvo, it's different, no? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Marwin, it's not a standard. Uh, in, a, in a automotive, it's a standard. The P0117 is the same for all the gasoline automotive uh, engines, no? In Marwin, no. The DTC codes have a difference in between the manufacturer. Volvo, uh, 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 Yanma, uh, Yamaha, yeah? Depen depend on the manufacturer, the DTC code, the, uh, is a uh, different uh, depending of the manufacturer. Okay. In this one, you find more standards. In this one, it's more standard than gasoline. I am talking about marine. Okay. If you have a, a code related with not sensor and my engine is caterpillar, it's the same code that a Volvo or Cummins or uh, yeah, is is universal. In gasoline, no, there are different, like Yamaha or Suzuki or uh, Mercury. Uh, in diesel, no. But the diagnosis is the same. The diagnosis is the same. For that reason, for that reason, if you work with outboards, if you work with outboards, you need a specific tools for Yamaha, a scanner, uh, a specific tools. You need a specific tools for Mercury. You need a specific tools for Suzuki. Wow, wow. I am a, an a outboard mechanic. How many scanners I need? 20. Oh, no. No, I am going to be specialized in Mercury. Only Mercury. Because I don't have money for 20 scanners. And 20 tools to remove the spark plugs. Because it's different. In, oh, no, that, that's crazy. In diesel, no. In diesel, the diagnosis is more universal. Anybody follow me?